All right, students. The next chapter which we are going to revise now is the chapter of registrations. Everyone, let's go ahead and take a quick linking first of all. What did you start learning GST with everyone? GST we started learning with good sir. Service, whenever goods or service will be supplied. So, supply can be either interstate supply or intrastate. Interstate supply, what will happen, everyone? IGST will be levied. Intrastate, CGST will be levied. Right, everyone? SGST also will be levied, but SGST is not a part of syllabus. Right, everyone? Now, once GST is levied, GST has to be collected and paid by a taxable person everyone listen to me very carefully now can you tell me the section number section number 252 services section number 2102 supply section number 7 supply section number 8 is composite supply and mix supply composite supply everyone sir composite supply is principal supply correct and mix supply everyone I yes, said very good everyone interstate sir when different state, different UT, one state, one UT transaction is happening, then it is interstate, correct? Intra is within the state, within the UT, correct everyone? Chalo. Now, IGST ka levy section is section number 5, not applicable for you guys, right everyone? IGST you don't have to remember. What you have to go ahead and remember is CGST, section number 9, section number 9, 1 everyone, normal levy, 9, 2, HP man, louder everyone, HP man. 9-3, RCM, you remember everyone, reverse charge mechanism, 9-4, unregistered person, promoter related reverse charge, correct, real estate ka, 9-5, okay, e-commerce operator, Ola, Uber, etc, but not applicable for your C-enter anyways, correct everyone, chalo, now we have, sir, whenever goods or service will be supplied, interstate IGST, intrastate CGST, correct, once GST is levied, GST is to be collected and paid by a taxable person, who is a taxable person everyone, a taxable person is a person who is registered or who is liable to be registered under section number 22 or 24, so people, if I am liable to register, but I don't take registration, I still have to pay GST from my own pocket, but if I take registration, I will collect and pay, right everyone, so let's go ahead and get it started with taxable person, basically registration wala chapter, that who is liable to take registration, who is not liable and who is required to take compulsory registration. You know when I teach the registration ka chapter now, we will go ahead and first learn about those people who are required compulsory registration. Okay everyone, now registration ka case mein people who are required compulsory registration also, in that also, government has gone ahead and used the power under section number 23 to and notified some people who are exempted from compulsory registration. Okay everyone, now we will go ahead and learn about the compulsory registration. Compulsory registration may they have gone ahead and told these are the people who will be required compulsory registration irrespective of their people irrespective of their turnover. Now sir, person making interstate taxable supply. If you are a person who is going ahead and supplying from one state to another, sir, if I am going ahead and doing interstate supply, if I am doing interstate supply, sir, interstate may, you can have supplier of goods also, you can have supplier of service also. Now, you know what happened, supplier of service started crying, they told, sir, compulsory registration, I am a chartered accountant, one return filed of one person in Delhi, 500 rupees taken, compulsory GST registration, sir, so government went ahead and told, supplier of service, government used the power, first they told compulsory registration, then they used the power under section number 232 and exempted them up to 20 lakh or 10 lakhs. Can I go ahead everyone? Now sir, we have interstate supplier of goods. Sir, interstate supplier of goods may, again we have two bifurcations which are there. If you are a supplier of handicraft goods, then for you or other goods, Baba, other goods may do compulsory registration. But handicraft goods, basically those people who are making goods, handicraft goods are those which are made predominantly by hand. Are we clear? In that scenario, government went ahead and told for you guys, okay, 20 lakhs or 10 lakhs rupees ka exemption will give. So, if you are a handicraft supplier supplying from one state to another, then sir, for you, compulsory registration is not required. You are given exemption up to 20 lakh or 10 lakhs. Right, sir, point is clear. So, here I have gone ahead and told exemption given to handicraft or craft and goods ka supplier. Basically, who are making goods predominantly by hand, up to 20 lakh or 10 lakh, they are exempted. The next is interstate supplier of taxable services exempted up to 20 lakh or 10 lakh. The next one over here is casual. Baba, who is very casual? Going from one state to another state. In that other state, he does not have a fixed shop 
or it does not have a fixed establishment also okay everyone so if you are going from one state to another and that other state may you don't have a fixed establishment then you are a casual taxable person and baba whoever is casual so for an example delhi say people are coming to karnataka for a trade fair those people in karnataka because they are casual over here they have come temporarily they don't have a permanent place of business over here they are required to take compulsory registration but sir again sir handicraft goods wala people started crying they told sir we are coming from supposingly rajasthan to karnataka to do business and you are telling compulsory sir then government went in and told okay handicraft supplier again if you are going to other state for you even if you are making interstate taxable supply of handicraft goods up to 20 lakh or 10 lakh we will go ahead and exempt you the next one over here is if you are a person who is required to pay tax under rcm do you remember section number 93 we went ahead and learned so whenever whenever one person is required to pay tax under rcm he is required to take compulsory registration but again everyone listen to me very carefully now you tell me one thing if there is a director i am a director in a company can you tell me who will pay the gst under rcm if i am giving services to the company <laughs> company will pay the gst under rcm now tell me one thing do i ever have to pay gst my own do i have to pay or always company will pay company, company or body corporate will pay so sir government told a director even if your turnover crosses 20 lakh why will you take registration because always if you are giving a service company will pay so government went ahead and told the director under section number 232 that because you are you are making taxable supply and the tax is always payable under rcm you don't take registration you are exempted and I, I tell me one thing company is going to pay gst under rcm so company will take compulsory <laughs> now tell me one thing if supposingly if supposingly the company over here is already registered will it take second time registration okay no sir theek hai the next one over here is just like ctp ctp is coming from other state if someone is coming from other country where he does not have a fixed place of business in india also he does not have a residence also in india government is telling you oh, you will run away so better you take compulsory registration and hence nrtp making taxable supplies are required compulsory registration then sir the next one over here is you remember there is a principal there is a agent and sir there is a customer now principal went ahead and made the supply principal uh, sends the goods to whom agent agent supplies invoice is in the name of the agent now government is going ahead and telling principal if you are registered person when you are sending the goods section number 71 c me this is supply and when this is a supply when this is a supply you will be liable to pay gst when you pay gst now when he is selling he will charge output tax liability let him charge he will take input tax credit input he will use against output so government told him hey you have to take compulsory registration are we clear everyone can i ask you one question if supposingly principal directly gives invoices in that scenario is the agent required compulsory registration no when will the agent required compulsory registration in this scenario when his commission when his commission crosses 20 lakh or 10 lakh did you guys get my point see now normally what i am telling in this scenario supposingly i am telling you once again sir in this scenario if the principal is registered person agent will be required compulsory registration irrespective of his turnover but in the same scenario if i go ahead and tell you there is a principal there is a agent and there is a customer over here and principal goes ahead and directly issues the invoice in that scenario everyone sir this agent is not required compulsory registration but this agent when he will charge commission etc if his commission ka income exceeds 10 lakh or 10 lakh then he will be required compulsory registration are we all clear till here can we go ahead everyone okay just a minute everyone now everyone over here is this point clear to all so who are the people required compulsory registration interstate supplier number 2 casual taxable person number 3 RCMA if you are liable to pay tax NRTP and the last one over here agent of a boss who is a taxable person are we clear everyone now everyone over here now section number 23 goes ahead and talks about those people who are not required to take compulsory not not required to take registration at all not compulsory they are not required to take registration at all sir person who are not liable to take registration are any person if is exclusively engaged in supplying of goods services or both that are not liable to tax or wholly exempt so supposingly i am going ahead and supplying those goods on which there is no tax only or which are exempted from tax only i will go ahead and tell sir why will i take registration because i don't have to go ahead and pay any tax and hence even if my turnover process 20 lakh or 10 lakh 
I will not be required to take any registration because, sir, if I take registration also, will I pay anything to the government? So, government is telling, don't take any registration. Secondly, agriculturist. Who is an agriculturist, everyone? Agriculturist who does to the extent of produce out of cultivation of land. And Baba, remember one thing. If you are producing out of cultivation of land and you are going ahead and selling, I'm cultivating and selling. Even though those items where GST is there, but because I'm an agriculturist growing and selling, I don't have to charge any GST. Even if I'm selling 5 crore ka sale, 10 crore ka sale doesn't require any registration because you are a agriculturist. And sir, who is an agriculturist? He can be an individual or HUF. Who only red thing, who does cultivation of land either through own labor or might be he's getting his family to work or family labor or by servants on wages or by hired labor under personal or family supervision people who are the people not required registration number one if you are not required to pay any tax wholly exempted or goods are not liable to any tax secondly <laughs> agriculture is done sir now everyone tell me one thing supposingly here, over here, there is an agriculturist. There is an agriculturist. Okay, everyone. Now, what happens? Under agriculturist comes APMC agent. APMC agent. These people are basically going to sell the agricultural produce to customer. Okay, everyone. Now, in this scenario, tell me one thing. Is the agriculturist a registered person? No. Is he required compulsory registration? No. Because agriculturist is not registered. registered. When you are supplying agricultural produce, because agriculturist will not be registered, when you are a agricultural produce marketing committee ka agent and you are selling the goods, you will also not be required compulsory. Are we clear everyone? Now the next point over here is, people, the next point over here is when, uh, now supposingly this person will be required, if his commission income exceeds everyone, if his commission is greater than 20 lakh rupees, then then also not required because APMC agents ka commission pay, there is no GST. In your agriculture wala chart, you will be able to see this. That sir, whenever, when you go to your agriculture wala chart, I'll show you, sir, you don't go here and there. Sir, agricultural produce marketing committee ka agent pay, there is no GST. And hence, even if my turnover process 20 lakh, I'll not be required to take registration. Why, Baba, why? Because if I'm not liable to pay any tax only, why will I take? Registration people, you are getting it. Everyone is able to recall. Yes, sir. The next one over here is notified category of persons who are exempted from registration. Notified category of person who are exempted from registration. If you go ahead and talk about this. Now, this has to be read along with section number 24. And this also has to be read along with section number 22. 24 wala to I have mentioned along with 24 only. Correct, everyone? Whatever, whoever people were exempted, I have mentioned along with section number 24 only. Now, section number 22 may, there is one more notification which is there, which we'll be going ahead and learning with section number 22. Now, section number 22, everyone, people, can we do section number 22 now? People, I am not able to listen to you guys. Audio, everyone, yes. Person who are liable for registration. Who are the people who are liable for registration? It means these people are required to take registration. Section number 22 has section number 21, section number 22, section number 23 and section number 24. Section number 21 goes ahead and talks about supplier. Who will be liable everyone? Supplier will be liable when? Supplier will be liable in the state or union territory from where he makes taxable supply. Supplier will be liable from where? From where he is doing taxable supply, if his aggregate turnover process, 20 lakh rupees. But sir, if you are a supplier who is going ahead and doing supply from special category state, then sir, you will be liable if your aggregate turnover process, 10 lakh. What is the special category state? M square NT, Manipur, Mizoram, Nagaland and Tripura. Are we clear everyone? But remember one thing. Now, this has to be read. Section number 21 has to be read with section number 23. Two ka, one notification which has been issued. Government has gone ahead and told that, sir, government have gone ahead and told that we will go ahead and exempt exclusive supplier of goods up to 40 lakh rupees. Exclusive supplier of goods up to 40 lakh. Exclusive supplier of goods up to an aggregate turnover of 40 lakh has been exempted from what? registration and sir they have gone ahead and told so it means if i am an exclusive supplier of goods how much will be the limit for me 40 lakh rupees are we clear everyone but then they went ahead and told this 40 lakh limit will not be available this 40 lakh limit will not be available if you are a person not applicable if person is required to take compulsory beta if you are required section number 24 may compulsory registration then what 40 lakh 20 lakh 10 lakh you are required compulsory the second one is if you are a supplier of pan masala ice cream tobacco flyers, bricks, blocks, 
and aggregates was there. Now, fly ash aggregates may earlier they used to say before this amendment, they used to say only if 90% is fly ash. What is fly ash? <coughs> After you burn that coal, that ash will be there. Baba, that fly, that ash will fly. So, Baba, that is fly ash. Okay, everyone. Now, fly ash, the bricks is made. Now, if the 90% content is there, then those people were ineligible. But now, government went ahead and told what 90%. People, what they didn't know, they made 89% content. Now, government is going ahead and telling, Baba, this 90% and all, we don't care. If you are making fly ash bricks, blocks or aggregates, means even if you are making that fly ash ka aggregate, then Baba, with 90% or more, forget it. Even if you are making fly ash aggregate, if you are a supplier of pan masala, in ice cream, tobacco, fly ash, bricks, blocks or aggregates, people remember one thing, supplier they are telling. So, I can manufacture and supply or might be I am buying and supplying. They are going ahead and talking about supplier. Okay, everyone. And hence, and then next one is, if you are making bricks of fossil meal or similar siliceous earth or building bricks or earthen or roofing tile, then for you, 40 lakh limit will not be available. What will your limit, everyone? 20 lakh. Or, sir, if you are a bakra exercising voluntary registration or intends to continue under registration, you are telling, sir, I don't want... Okay, okay, oh, 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 oh. okay. Everyone, we are back with the pencil. Chalo, everyone, over here now. Sir, if you are a person who is exercising voluntary registration or you intend to continue with your registration, then government is going ahead and telling over here that, sir, you are a bakra. You are telling, I want to continue with my registration. I don't want 40 lakh, then who will stop you? Or, sir, if you are a person who is exercising voluntary registration, then government is telling who is going ahead and stopping you. What 40 lakh, what 20 lakh or what 10 lakh for you? Then the next one over here, sir, if you are a person who is doing interstate supply in the state of M square NT or Pumas of Telangana, then for you, 40 lakh a limit is not available. Sir, can you please go ahead and tell us what is the shortcut to remember? Remember this registration limit, everyone. Remember this registration limit. If you are there in the state of M square NT, what is M square NT, everyone? Manipur, Mizoram, Nagaland and Tripura. For you, supplier of goods, 10 lakh. Supplier of service, 10 lakh. Sir, supplier of goods plus service, 10 lakh. Sir, if I am in the state of Pumas, Puducherry, Uttarakhand, Meghalaya, Arnachal, Sikkim and Telangana, then for me, supplier of goods, 20 lakh. Supplier of service, 20 lakh. Supplier of goods plus service, 20 lakh rupees. Sir, now if I am there in other states, Assam, Oak of Himachal Pradesh, then sir, if I am a supplier of goods, 40 lakh rupees, supplier of service or goods plus service, then 20 lakh. So here is the change where government went ahead and told, if you are in Oak of Himachal Pradesh, for you the limit will be 40 lakh. Now everyone listen to me very carefully. This 40 lakh limit will not be available to you if you are a person who is required compulsory registration or you are going ahead and supplying what? Pan masala, aerated water. Aerated water is there here? No, 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 no. Pan masala, ice cream. Pan masala, ice cream, tobacco, then flakes, fly as brakes, blocks, aggregate, then breaks of fossil meal or similar siliceous earth, building bricks or earthen or roofing tile, then for you, 40 lakh limit will not be available, 20 lakh limit. Sir, if I am a voluntary registered person, then Baba, you take voluntary registration on 10 lakh, 20 lakh, doesn't matter. And the last one is, if you are in Pumas of Telangana and M square NT, 40 lakh limit is not there. Can we go ahead, everyone? Yes, sir, point is clear. Everyone over here now. So, sir, tell me one thing, everyone. If I am there in uh, Manipur also and Puducherry also, then limit will be how much, everyone? Lower limit will apply. Please solve some questions before you go for the exam. Everyone over here now. Listen to me very carefully. Sir, I am a supplier. Supplier will be liable when his aggregate turnover crosses 20 lakhs. Sir, if you are going ahead and making taxable supply, taxable supply from where? Special category state, then 10 lakh is the limit. Then government on request of a special category state plus recommendation of council. Baba, special category state actually was humans of Tripura and Jammu and Kashmir. But then if special category state is requesting, then 10 lakh a limit can be made to 20. And many of the state ka case may government have made it. Special category state ke liye limit how much? 20 lakh. Correct everyone. Now, sir, enhance the limit from 10 to 20. Government has the power. The next one also government has the power that, sir, if any state is requesting plus recommendation of council is there, then government can enhance the limit from 20 lakh to 40 lakh in case of exclusive supplier of goods. But government did not use this power. Government earlier, this power was not there only and hence government had to use the power under section number 23 to.
Now everyone over here, can you go ahead and tell me what do you mean by aggregate turnover everyone? You have to remember aggregate turnover for your exam, very, very important. Aggregate turnover means aggregate people, you will do aggregate the turnover. Turnover means taxable supply. People, next, TI, I for interstate supply, E for exempt supply, E for export, taxable supply, interstate supply, exempt supply and export. Do you remember exempt supply includes what everyone? Nail rated supply, whatever is only exempted and sir, non-taxable supply. I hope you guys remember this. Can you tell me what are the two non-taxable supplies in GST? Alcoholic liquor for human consumption and HP man. Done sir. Now everyone listen to me very carefully. Turnover may you will include TIE square, taxable supplies, interstate, exempt and export. Sir, what are the things you will not include? Somebody supplied me. I purchased. I am paying the tax under reverse charge. Is it my turnover or his turnover? So always remember, inward supplies under RCM is never your turnover. Please go ahead and always exclude. And sir, GST is never my turnover. GST is never to be included. It will always be excluded. Are we clear, everyone? Now always remember, turnover, You whenever it says turnover in state, that is state-wise turnover. All the state cut turnover under my PAN number, if I go ahead and aggregate is, that is known as aggregate turnover. I hope everyone is clear till here. Can we go ahead everyone? Now everyone over here, aggregate turnover means PAN wise all India basis pay or turnover and aggregate may there is turnover, taxable supply, interstate supply, exempt and export, T-I-E-E, -E. taxable supplies, people, you have to talk with me. Can we go ahead everyone? Everyone over here. In the turnover, what are the things you are going to exclude? You are going to exclude inward supplies under RCM and GST. Sir, note, one, sir, inward supplies made on behalf. E, sir, tell me one thing. Include the supplies made on behalf of principal. If I supply on behalf of my principal and I am giving the invoice, whose turnover? My turnover. If principal gives the invoice, principal cut turnover. Whoever gives the invoice, it says turnover. And in the exam, whenever they say, as an agent, you are supplying on behalf of principal, remember, you are an agent as per 71C and you have given the invoice, it will be included in your turnover. Can I go ahead, everyone? The next one over here is, supply of goods from registered job worker ka premises, always included in aggregate turnover of the principal. I have a job worker, there the work is done already. My goods are lying over there. Now, from there only I sold it. Who sold it? Principal or job worker? And hence, turnover of the principal. Sir, always remember, if I went ahead and sold, you paid the tax under reverse charge. Your turnover or my turnover? Are my turnover. Outward means my turnover. Inward means my purchase. And purchase will never come in your turnover. Very, very important from exam point of view. Please practice questions and go. Can we go ahead, everyone? 100%. One question will come from 22, 23 and 24. Can I go ahead everyone? Now listen to me very carefully. Can you go ahead and tell me one thing everyone? If I go ahead, if I go ahead and supposingly give money to use to someone, if I go ahead and give money to use to someone, what is that everyone? Giving money to someone is what? Giving of money to someone is loan. Whenever you are giving money to use to someone and taking interest, it is what always? Exempt supply. Yes or no, everyone? Now, you tell me one thing. One minute, everyone. It's working fine, everyone? Yes. If I go ahead and give, huh, if I go ahead and supposingly give someone money to use and he goes ahead and gives me interest, Baba, interest is what? It means it is my exempt supply of service. Yes or no, everyone? Now, when I'm calculating my aggregate turnover, when I'm calculating my aggregate turnover, for an example, I am doing taxable supplies, 38 lakh. I am doing exempt supply, which is interest income. 3 lakh rupees. Can you tell me my aggregate turnover? 38 plus 3, 41. Yes or no? Exam supplies? Array, exam supplies included. Now, everyone tell me one thing. If exam supply is included, this is what? Service? And supposing this supply of goods. I am supplying goods and giving money to use to someone is a service. Now, everyone tell me one thing. When you have given someone money to use, it's a service. Exclusive supplier of goods only get 40 lakh rupees. Yes or no? So you will get 40 or 20? 20. 20. But then government went ahead and told, for you, if you have only interest income, still I will not see that interest and I will still give you 40 lakh rupees ka higher limit. Remember, interest will come in your aggregate turnover. But sir, it will not make you ineligible for a higher limit of 40. You will still get a higher limit of 40 lakh rupees. Are you clear everyone? Interest will come in your aggregate turnover. 
but sir but sir you will not be ineligible for 40 lakh you will still get 40 lakh rupees you will be considered as if you are a exclusive supplier of goods and you will get 40 lakh rupees are we all clear till here everyone over here now listen person shall be deemed to be exclusive supplier of goods even if he is engaged in exam supply of service by way of extending deposit loans and advance so far as the consideration is represented by way of interest and discount always remember only if you are having exam supply of service which is interest or discount but what discount is what bill discounting wallet discount right everyone then only they are going ahead and telling we'll allow you a 40 lakh rupees ka higher limit supposingly i have taxable supply of goods also and i have exempt income might be i'm giving rent to a home home that exempt income is if it is there then how much limit 40 lakh or 20 lakh 20 lakh are we clear only exempt supply of service which is interest income still you will get 40 lakh rupees ka higher limit are we all clear till here everyone over here now the next one over here is section number 22 may section number 22 which goes ahead and says sir if you are registered under the earlier law VAT, now when your gst has come please take gst by registration sir you are registered under service tax now gst has come please take registration under gst sir on the appointment date 22nd of june 2017 okay sir now the next one over here is sir who will be liable third case everyone Transfery. I went ahead and transferred the business to you. When I transfer the business to you, you will be liable to take compulsory registration under section number 23, 22, 3. Sir, transfery, in, when transfer is registered, I am a person who is registered. Everyone over here, I am a person who is registered. I transferred my business to you. It means I will give you all my assets and liabilities, everyone. Now, you being a person who is the transferee, you have to go ahead and collect GST and pay to the government. Baba people, when I transferred the business to you, you have to collect pay GST to the government. How will you collect and pay if you are not registered? And hence, government went ahead and told transfer has to take registration under section number 23 to if you have transferred your business as going concern. And sir, he will take registration from which date? From the date of transfer or succession. Now, the next one is, sir, transfer in case of amalgamation, Demerger pursuant to a court order. Always remember in this thing, sir, what happens is, supposingly the board of director of A Limited and B Limited decided that they will merge on 1st of January. Okay, everyone. Then they went to NCLT. NCLT ke pass, they will go. National Company Law Tribunal. The NCLT will give order. Okay, everyone. Now, NCLT will give order that company has become AB Limited. Okay, everyone. After that, what they will do? After that, they will go to the registrar of companies and tell, sir, please go ahead and incorporate us. So, registrar of companies will give a certificate of incorporation, which is their birth certificate. Yes or no, everyone? The day they get their birth certificate, only then they can go ahead and apply for registration. And hence, when will they become liable? They will become liable when they get certificate of incorporation. They will become liable the day ROC issues a certificate of incorporation. Are we all 100% clear till here? Can we go ahead, everyone? People watching at home, we had paused the video, we are starting again. Everyone over here, we are done with section number 22, section number 23 and section number 24. What did section number 22 tell? People who are liable. 23 told people who are not liable. Section number 24, compulsory registration. Everyone over here now, listen to me very carefully. Once you become liable, once you become liable under section number 22 or 24, sir, when do you become liable under section number 22? When you cross aggregate turnover, when, when, on the appointment date, you become liable. Thige? Sir, transfer on the date of transfer, you will become liable. Here, on the date of certificate of incorporation, you will become liable. When you become liable, sir, if I do interstate supply, I'll become liable. If I am a casual taxable person, I'll become liable. The time you become liable, remember one thing, you have to go ahead and apply for registration within 30 days. Who went ahead and told that you have to apply for registration within 30 days? The next section over here, section number... Everyone, section number 25, we have section number 25, 1, which goes ahead and says, supposingly, we will go ahead and tell over here, supposingly, this is, madam, your name? Huh? Your only? Huh? Ritu, this is Ritu, madam, over here. Okay, now Ritu, madam, over here, she became liable. Everyone, over here. Now Ritu, madam, became liable. She, she did not become liable. She got an idea and she started a business. Now, one day she became liable. Okay, sir, this is Ritu, madam. She became liable. Now, when you become liable, everyone, when you become liable, you when you become liable for registration under section number 22 or 24, you are required to take registration. Sir, you are required to take registration. Section number 25, one comes over here that whenever a person is liable, sir, they have to apply for registration within 30 days. Yes, very good. Now, proviso goes ahead and tells over here, if you are a CTB or NRTB, five days. 
prior to the commencement of business sir scz unit or scz developer if i have within the same state one scz unit also sir and what they another unit outside the scz then for them scz i have to take separate registration sir if i am in the territorial waters of india everyone i am in the territorial waters of india here supposingly then i have to take registration in the nearest coastal state can i go ahead everyone now we have section number 25 one is done now section number 25 two comes over here in the next page please come to section number 25 two i will come back to section number 25 one let's go ahead and first do section number 25 two section number 25 2 goes ahead and says sir if you are a procedure for registration section number 25 2 says if you are a person having multiple place of business in my state i have supposingly one shop sir one go down sir supposingly one uh, factory over here and one back office can i take separate separate registration they went ahead and told yes baba in a state or union territory you can take separate separate registration sir it may be granted separate registration for each place of business if you want separate separate registration you can take separate application you give separate verification will happen separate registration certificate will be granted so it says over here rule number 11 separate application under in gst rec 01 sir for each place of business you have to give separate application see generally in one state if i have four place of business this place i can show principal place of business in my registration and all these places i can show additional place of business correct everyone in one registration only I can do that. But sir, if I want, I can take separate, separate registration. But sir, separate, separate registration means separate, separate application, separate, separate verification will happen of the application and separate, separate registration certificate will be given. Can you tell me one thing? If I go ahead and take separate, separate registration of each place of business, then each place of business will become for each other what? Distinct person. Very good, everyone. Everyone listen to me very carefully. So, separate application, separate verification and separate registration certificate. Now, the next one over here is section number 25.3 which goes ahead and talks about the Bakra. Who is the Bakra everyone? A person who takes voluntary. Baba, practically you don't call him Bakra. Just imagine someone's father today went ahead and told, I took voluntary registration in GST and you are telling, Papa, you are looking like Bakra. Baba, don't do that. Okay, everything told in class is only for classroom purpose. Okay, everyone. Take care. Only so that you remember. Everyone over here now. Everyone here now, sir, I took voluntary registration. Do I look like a Bakra? Huh? Then uh, study. Everyone, section number 25, 3 over here. Person, though not liable under section number 22 or 24, and you get voluntary, you may get voluntary registration. Means if you want, you can take voluntary registration, even though you are not liable. And they are telling, what is the effect of voluntary registration? You will become all the provision of the act as applicable to a registered person shall apply you can take itc you can charge gst you have to file return but there is no lock-in period might be after one month of taking registration you are telling i want to cancel okay cancel and get lost the next one over here is section number 25 4 which goes ahead and talks about distinct person if in one state i have two separate registration both for each other will become what distinct person from here to here i am supplying anything that will be a supply between distinct person and section number seven one C, it will be a supply. Sir, person has obtained or required to obtain multiple registration in one state or union territory. Each registration can respect me. You will be treated as distinct person. I hope this point is clear to all. The next one over here is person has obtained or required to obtain registration with respect to an establishment in a with respect to an establishment has an establishment in other state then sir, each establishment shall be treated as distinct person. Tell me one thing everyone. One state registered same state may one more registration distinct person one state registered another state registered distinct person one state registered another state not registered still distinct person are we all clear till here can we go ahead the next one over here is section number 25 6 sir whenever you are taking registration pan number is mandatory section number 25 6a to 6d is there Aadhaar authentication government is going ahead and telling many fake people are going ahead and taking registration taking registration doing business and running away Doing business means issuing fake fake invoices, passing on the credit, all wrong things people are doing. So government wanted to go ahead and verify the identity of those people. Yes, everyone. And hence, we had Aadhaar authentication which came and government went ahead and told that, sir, under section number 25, government told section number 25, 6A, 6B, 6C and 6D. The, now, this Aadhaar authentication was launched approximately in 
2020. Now, sir, when GST came in 2017, 2017 to 2020, already people would have taken registration. So, they are known as already registered person. Already and government is going ahead and telling for these people also will be required to do other authentication, but not all of them. In this, government have gone ahead and told some few of them to take registration. I'll talk about it little later. Rule number 10B has come. I'll talk about it rule number 10B little later. Are we clear everyone? Now, 6B goes ahead and tells if you are an individual, you have to take Aadhaar authentication means you have to do Aadhaar authentic. What is Aadhaar authentication? Nothing. When you are doing a registration, no, the one tab is there. Do Aadhaar authentication. You tell, yes, I want to do one. A link will come in your mail ID. Click on the link, put your Aadhaar number, OTP will get generated, put the OTP, story is over. That is Aadhaar authentication. Are we clear everyone? Now, if you are an individual, you have to do Aadhaar authentication. 6C went ahead and told, if you are a authorized signatory, any authorized signatory in registration, you have to do Aadhaar authentication. Managing an authorized partner or karta, they also have to do Aadhaar authentication. Always remember, if you are an individual, you have to do Aadhaar authentication. A for authorized signatory, M for managing an authorized partner and karta, then you have to undergo Aadhaar authentication. Are we clear everyone? The next one over here is who are the people who are not required to do Aadhaar authentication? Everyone over here. I have gone ahead and told over here, sir, person notified under 6D, that is, that is 6A, 6B, 6C of section number 25 shall not apply to a person who, <laughs> sir, who is NDL, New Delhi. PSU. Sir, not a citizen of India. Baba, if you are not a citizen of India only, how will you have Aadhaar? Correct or not? D for Department of Government is telling my people, I will not go ahead and doubt them. They are not required to do Aadhaar authentication. If you are a Department of Central Government, State Government, L for Local Authority, S for P for Public Sector Undertaking, S for Statutory Body, U for UIN Holder. Can you tell me who are the people required Aadhaar authentication, everyone? IAM. Individual, authorized signatory, managing an authorized partner and Karta. People, you have to talk with me. Sir, who are the people who are not required other authentication? New Delhi, PSU. And for not a citizen of India, then Department of Central Government, State Government, L for local authority, then Sir, public sector undertaking, statutory body and U for UIN holder. Are we clear everyone? Unique identification number folders. The next one over here is section number 25.7. Section number 25.7 goes ahead and says, if you are a non-resident taxable person coming from outside India and taking registration in India, how will you take registration? They have gone ahead and told, you will have to apply in GST RG09. Along with that, you can give self-attested copy of the passport and five days prior to commencement of business, you have to go ahead and take registration. When you are taking registration, whatever will be your liability payable later that you have to pay in advance. Advance tax to be deposited on the basis of temporary reference number. Rule number 9 and 10 will apply mutatis mutandis means, sir, once you go ahead and fill your application form GSTR 09, then, sir, government will do the verification and registration certificate will be granted. Are we all clear till here? The next one over here is, sir, application made by NRTP shall always be signed or e-verified by the authorized signatory. An authorized signatory should be a resident of India and having a valid pan. Okay, sir. Section number 25E say, 8 says, sir, if you don't take registration and you are caught by the proper officer, proper officer will register you on his own. Are we clear, everyone? That is suo motor registration. Then we have section number 25.9. Government is going ahead and telling, everyone listen to me very carefully. This is US Embassy in India. US Embassy supposedly. Now, government is going ahead and telling, Sir, if US Embassy, all these consulates, embassies who are there in India, they go ahead and buy anything. Whatever GST they have paid on buying, they can go ahead and claim a refund. Are you guys able to understand? And for the purpose of claiming of refund only, basically they are given unique identification number. Are we clear everyone? Can we go ahead? Now, everyone, you know what will happen when they will buy from this person to this person, they will give them their UIN number. That's it. This is my UIN number. Now, this person will deposit the tax with the government under that UIN number and government will give them the refund. Are you clear everyone? That is why UIN number is given. Everyone over here. It says over here, specialized agency of United Nations, any multilateral financial institution, organization under the United Nations, consulate embassies of foreign country or any other person who are, or class of person notified by the commissioner shall be granted UIN number for the purpose of refund of taxes or notified supplies of goods, services or both. Everyone, application for UIN number is for RG, GST RG, 13. Once the verification is done, they will be given their UN number within 3 months. 
three days. Sorry, sir. You remember one thing? The three working days it is. W D S. Okay, everyone. Working days. Everyone, listen to me very carefully. U I N granted in one state is valid across India. If supposingly U S K embassy is there in India, U S K embassy did not U S K embassy do not have to go ahead and take U I N number if they are in Delhi also, if they are in Kolkata also, if they are in Chennai also, they can take one U I N valid across India. Everyone over here. Now section number twenty five may section number twenty five may I went ahead and told you section number twenty five. One, you are required to take registration within 30 days. CDB and RDB, five days prior. SEZ, separate registration. And TWI, nearest postal state. Sir, section number 25 two, multiple place of business. Multiple registration can be taken. Section number 25 three, everyone. Voluntary registration. Remember, remember. You know what? Revision is nothing other than recalling. You know what, when you are sleeping at night, you should try to recall. Because in the exam, that is only the problem. You know, you never practice recalling. When you don't practice recalling, exam, what do you do? You recall what you have already studied. So that recalling, ke liye, you have to learn that. No, Baba, you can do meditation in one day. You have to learn. Correct? Can you go to the cricket field and start batting in one day? No, you have to learn. And recalling also you have to learn. The more you listen to a revisionary video again and again and again and again, it will be like in the exam, I am sitting beside you and telling the answer, hey, reverse charge, the, reverse charge, reverse charge. You getting my point? So, if you go ahead, if you go ahead and listen to the revisionary video again and again, then Baba, you will be able to recall that, okay, sir was telling this, ah, this security service, ah, GST will come. You getting my point, everyone? So, you have to keep revising again and again and keep recalling. When I am talking, you have to talk with me. Can we go ahead, everyone? The next one over here now, listen to me very carefully. Section number 25, 4 and 5 talks about distinct person. 6 talks about fan. Sir, 6A, 6B, 6A and 6D. Aadhaar, authentication. 7 and RTP. 8 went ahead and told, if you don't take registration, so motto, officer will register. And 9, everyone, you are an older. Run, everyone. Now, sir, if I have to take registration, I have to go ahead and follow rule number 8, rule number 9 and rule number 10. I will go ahead and quickly run through the rules. Please come back. Everyone over here now. Everyone, section number 25 may, we went ahead and understood. Section number 25, one told, if you are a person who is liable, you should take registration within 30 days. CDP and RTP, 5 days prior. SEZ, separate registration. TWI, nearest postal state. Everyone, now, sir, when you have to take registration, you have to give application. Officer will do verification and then he will grant you registration certificate. So, sir, rule number 8 goes ahead and talks about application. Every person who is liable under section number 25, means 22 and 24 may you are liable, then 25 may told you should take registration within 30 days. Now, if you are a person who is liable under section number 25 to take registration within 30 days or might be after 30 days also you are taking registration, then... You should declare in part A of GST REG01, PMS, PAN number, mobile number and sir, state or union territory. Now, what will happen? After this, they will do the verification and give you one temporary reference number. Now, you have to use the temporary reference number. Go online and you have to fill part B of GST REG01. When you are filling part B of GST REG01, there you will go ahead and see you, are two, you have an option of Aadhaar authentication. Can you guys see over here? Now, See, Aadhaar authentication, if you tell a yes over here that I want to do Aadhaar authentication, then always remember, if you are telling that I want to do Aadhaar authentication, what is the date of submission of your form? Now, you will go ahead and verify and submit your form. That is not the day of submission of your form. That, now, what will happen? If you have told a yes that I will do Aadhaar authentication, then one link will come in your mail ID. That link you click, put your Aadhaar number, put the OTP. And then it will be that your form is completed and submitted. Now the officer will start the verification. Sir, link came in my mail ID. 15 days I did not touch only. If you don't touch in 15 days, then the 16th day, officer will go ahead and pick up your, fan, uh, pick up your form and start the verification. Are we clear everyone? Everyone over here now. Sir, if I go ahead and say, yes, I want to do Aadhaar authentication, then sir, the date of submission will be the day I go online in my link, I go ahead and click and do the other authentication, that day will be the date of submission of my form. From that day, officer will start the verification. But if I don't do that, then sir, 15 days from the date of submission of Part B, officer will wait for 15 days. If I submit it on 1st January, till 15th of January, officer will wait. 16th, he will pick up and start the verification. And sir, once the 
uh, form is submitted, they will give an acknowledgement in GST RC02. Always remember one thing, CTP, casual taxable person, they are given temporary reference number. On the basis of temporary reference number, they have to deposit advanced tax and only then acknowledgement will be given. Are we clear everyone? Sir, if I don't go ahead and if I go ahead and say no, I will not do other authentication, then the day you submit part B, from your end everything is done. You are telling I will not do other authentication, you do whatever you want. Are you guys able to understand? If you tell a no that sir, I will not do other authentication, in that scenario, the day you submit your part B, the day you submit your part B, that day is your date of submission of the form, officer will start the verification. Are you guys able to recall everyone? Now, sir, everyone listen to me very carefully. Now, once you go ahead and fill your form, the officer will go ahead and start the verification. When officer starts the verification, he will examine the application and he will examine the accompanying document. What are the documents you have given together? He will go ahead and check. Now, he will go ahead and check. Okay, application, document, everything is fine. Sir, over here, everyone. If application is fine, you are a person who is notified under 6D, means you are New Delhi. PSU, not required other authentication only. Then in that scenario, what will happen everyone? If you are a person who is not required other authentication, then they are going ahead and telling nothing. Sir, your application is fine. You are not required. See, there are two things. One is application, one is other authentication. Application is fine. Other authentication, you are not required. Then they are going ahead and telling within seven days, we'll approve the grant of registration and we'll issue a registration certificate. Are we all clear till here? Now, the next one over here is, sir, if my application is fine, uh -huh. application is fine, no tension. Now, Aadhaar authentication, me, sir, I am required. Who is required, everyone? I-A-M-K. Yes, everyone, you are required Aadhaar authentication. You have opted also. It is successful also means Aadhaar authentication also done. Application also fine. Very good. You will be given registration within seven days of submission, seven working days of submission. Registration will be granted and you will be given registration certificate. Everyone over here, application is fine. Application is Fine. Aadhaar authentication, there is some problem. Aadhaar authentication, you failed to do Aadhaar authentication. Or you did not go, Aadhaar authentication required, but you did not opt only. Uh, even after you have opt done Aadhaar authentication, everything was successful. Still, officer is telling, I doubt you. I have a doubt on you. Sir, if proper officer deems it fit to carry out physical verification of the place of business, number one, Aadhaar authentication failed. You did not, or number two, you did not opt only, or even after opting and successfully doing it, officer is telling, I have a doubt on you, then sir, always remember, in any of these three scenarios, application is fine, Aadhaar authentication is a problem, or officer still wants to come and do the physical verification, then always remember, first they will come and do the physical verification of the place of business and other document as the proper officer deems fit, he might go ahead and ask you other documents, he will check other documents and then within 30 days of submission of the application, now here the time limit will not be 7 days, it will be 30 days because now the officer has to come to your place of business, so he will take how many days everyone, 30 days and then he will approve the grant of registration and registration certificate will be issued. Are we all clear till here? Everyone, the next one over here, if application has a problem, uh -huh, application has a problem. Sir, Aadhaar authentication required, opted also, successful also. Okay, Aadhaar may no problem. Now, sir, what is the problem? Your application form may. Now, he will go ahead and tell you, hey, sir, when I was checking the application form, this was the problem. Correct? So, he will go ahead and give you a notice in GST RC 03. Within how many days? Either within seven days, he will approve or either within seven days, he will give you a GST RC 03 may a notice saying, sir, these are the clarification, these are the information, these are the documents which I require. You do one thing, you go ahead and submit your clarification information document in GST RC 07 within how many days? Seven days. He likes it. Ah, ha, ha. Within seven days, he will go ahead and approve. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like your reply or he, you have not replied within seven working days. Then, sir, he will go ahead and give record. He will record the reason and reject the application and inform you in GST RC 05. Sir, remember one thing everyone. Sir, my application also problem. Aadhaar authentication also. Aadhaar authentication. Sir, Aadhaar authentication I am required. Did not opt. Sir, after opting also failed. Or might be sir, even after Aadhaar authentication is successful, officer is telling I will come and do physical verification. Then first they will do physical premises verification. For what? For this Aadhaar wala problem. And sir, for application wala problem, what they will do? They will give you a notice in GST RG03 telling sir, these are the problems in your application. Yes, everyone. Now, people getting it. And but here what will happen now GST RG03 will be given within 30 days from the date of submission of application. Remember one thing. It was seven days. 
for clarification. But because first they will do physical verification of premises, they will take now 30 days. Are we clear everyone? Now they will give you a notice, you reply, if he likes it, he will go ahead and grant the registration and give you registration certificate. He doesn't like it. He will record the reason and reject the application and give you GST RC05. Sir, everyone over here. Sir, I have gone ahead and done everything. Officer is very lazy. Sir, I went ahead. If proper officer fails to take action within seven days from the date of submission in successful, I have done successful other authentication. Officer failed. He is not replying within seven days. Mistake? No. Sir, I went ahead and submitted my application. Sir, now everyone listen. I did not opt for Aadhaar. I other authentication failed or I did not opt or physical premises ka verification is required officer is telling then sir 30 days may he should do he should grant the registration sir within 30 days from date of submission officer did not take any action or sir officer asked me detail I went ahead and replied once I reply within seven days he should approve my registration he did not go ahead sir within seven working days of clarification information document he did not reply then always remember your auto approval will be done the application will be deemed to be approved and sir GSTN number plus registration certificate duly signed or e-verified will be made available within three days post the expiry of seven days 30 days or seven working days are we all clear people listen to me very carefully whenever your registration certificate will be issued registration certificate may registration certificate comes in GST REC 06 and they will always go ahead and show your principal place of business additional place of business and shall be made available on the common portal and GSTN number shall be assigned which is a 15 digit ka number. Always remember once your GST registration certificate has come no Baba put it in the wall correct it says over here rule number 18 display of registration certificate in prominent location means you should go ahead and display your registration certificate at a prominent location at your place of business or additional place of business. Sir display the GSTN number on the name board exhibited at the entry of the means number one that set certificate put it in the wall so that everyone can see. Number two, sir, GSTI number is there, no? That number you put it on the notice board, put it on your head. Head means that notice board of your shop. Are we clear, everyone? So that anyone entering your shop will be able to see your GSTI number. Are we all clear till here? Can we go ahead, everyone? Okay, sir. Now, everyone listen to me very carefully. Sir, you are granted a registration certificate. Always remember, once you are granted a registration certificate, from the date of grant of registration certificate, you have to go online and furnish your bank account detail. It says over here, rule number 10, furnish bank account detail within how many days? Due date of monthly return, first monthly return or 45 days, whichever is earlier. This is required, not applicable if you have gone ahead and furnished at the time of registration. Earlier at the time of registration, you had an option. Now you don't have an option only. So after registration only, you'll go ahead and furnish. Are we clear everyone? Can we go ahead everyone? Now everyone over here, this is one of the most important part which I want to understand. Listen, I became liable people. I became liable under section number 22 or 24. Sir, I should apply within I went ahead and applied over here. I went ahead and applied and here registration certificate was granted. Can you tell me registration certificate will be valid from when? <laughs> Sir, from the date of becoming liable. Always remember registration certificate will be effective from the date of becoming liable. Yes, everyone. This is one important part. Secondly, tell me one thing. During this period, whatever supplies I have done, I have not gone ahead and collected any tax. Can I go ahead and I, do I have to pay tax? Because I became liable, I am a taxable person. Here I am a registered person, correct? So during this period, whatever supplies I have done, for that, what will I issue? Revised tax. Revised tax invoice. Within how much time? Nine. One month, one month, one month. 30 days means exactly count 30 days. One month means one first to first. Third to third. Are you guys able to understand? Can we go ahead, everyone? Yes, sir. Point is clear. Sir, tell me one thing. Supposingly, I became liable. I should go ahead and apply within... 30 days. I went ahead and applied after 30 days. Then what will happen? And here registration certificate is granted. Granted. Registration certificate will be valid from? Date of grant of registration certificate. One small question can come in the exam. Please be very careful about it. Okay, everyone. Now, everyone over here, listen to me very carefully. There is one rule number 10B. Rule number 10B is going ahead and telling. What is rule number 10B? Rule number 10B is going ahead and telling that registered person other than 256D. What means? other than New Delhi, PSU, any other registered person shall issued a registration certificate. Might be they were issued a registration certificate where physical premises ka verification was done and they were given registration or might be they took registration before other authentication was even required only. 
Then they are going ahead and telling, now they shall undergo other authentication of proprietor, any partner, or karta managing director or any whole time director in case of company member of managing committee of association of person or body of individual or society trustee of board of trustees in case of trust baba and they should go undergo aadhar authentication of whom proprietor and of the authorized signatory partner and of the authorized signatory for what reason? Number one, if you are filing revocation application in GST RZ 21, sir, my registration is cancelled. I want to file a revocation application. When you file a revocation application, your Aadhaar authentication must be done. Secondly, for filing refund application under rule number 89 or rule number 96, Baba, rule number 86, 96, you don't have to remember. You just go ahead and say, because for CA final 89 and 96, here at your stage, what will you say? Sir, whenever I have to file a refund, application then also other authentication must be done if you remember 89 and 96 very good if you don't remember then just write sir revocation application refund application can i go ahead everyone and then sir if no other then sir i don't have other then they are telling furnish other enrollment i go take other furnish other enrollment id slip along with that give your bank passbook with photo or voter id or passport or driving license sir remember one thing once your aadhar number comes no then online go and do the aadhar authentication because as of now you gave what aadhar enrollment id slip so later such person shall undergo aadhar authentication within a period of 30 days of allotment of aadhar number then sir section number, rule number 25 is just going ahead and telling that sir if officer wants then sir before grant of registration also you can do physical verification of place of business and sir after grant also you can go ahead and do physical premises ka verification okay sir you can read this at home we are done with section number 25 please come now to section number 26 the biggest section over here baba everyone over here listen to me very carefully what is section number 26 going ahead and telling daughter is ready father is also ready Sir, sir, what are you telling? Baba, I am going ahead and telling, if registration is granted under SGST Act, it will be deemed that registration is granted under CGST Act also. You getting my point? Sir, daughter rejected you, father also will reject. Sir, registration certificate rejected under SGST Act, sir, then registration will be rejected under, deemed rejected under CGST Act also. Are we clear everyone? Registration certificate or UIN, when you go ahead and apply under the IGST Act, if it is approved or rejected, then deem that approved or rejected under CGST Act also. Can I go ahead everyone? See, you collect CGST, you collect SGST. For SGST, you take registration in the state. CGST, where you take registration? You don't take, but they are telling, we grant you registration. If SGST may grant it, we deem that CGST may also granted. Everyone over here, we are done with section number 22. People liable. People not liable. Compulsory registration. 25. Procedures. 26. Same registration. Now come to section number 27 everyone. Section number 27 goes ahead and talks about special provision with respect to CTP and NRTP. Everyone, section number 27 now. Section number 27 goes ahead and talks what? Section number 27 says special provision for CTP and NRTP. So if you are a casual taxable person, if you are a casual taxable person or you are a non-resident taxable person, then sir, before the commencement of your business, five days prior, you have to apply for registration. Sir, CTP will apply in GST RC01, NRTP applies in GST RC09 and along with that he gives self-registered copy of passport. Sir, always remember CTP or NRTP, whenever they are granted registration, first they have to pay their net estimated tax liability in advance and sir the amount will be credited to their e cash ledger then sir remember one thing verification will happen and registration certificate will be granted always remember once the registration certificate will be granted only then they will go ahead and make taxable supply always remember one thing sir nrtp or ctp they are given registration for how many days 90 days are we clear everyone sir if they are taking registration for 15 days, then only 15 days. One month, then one month. Maximum will be how many days? 90 days. Always remember, registration certificate will be valid for the period specified or 90 days, whichever is less. Now, sir, here what will happen? Registration certificate will be going to get expired, supposingly. Then, sir, before the registration certificate expires, they have to go ahead and apply for extension if they want. Might be they had come for a trade fair. Trade fair got extended. Sir, then extension kill you have to go ahead and apply. Sir, extension can also be maximum how many days everyone 90 days it means can you tell me how many days you can be a ctp or nrtp in a state sir 90 plus 91 80 days 
Sir, always remember when you are asking for extension, you have to apply in GSTRG 11 and for this additional period, you have to pay again advance pay tax. And sir, supposingly one CTP came to the state of Karnataka, 6 months, 90, sir, 90 plus 90, 180 days, he's already here. After that, he's telling, sir, I want more extension. Government is telling, hey, 6 months already here, you are no more casual in this state. Now, beyond 180 days, extension is not possible. Please take normal registration. Don't pay anything in advance. When you leave the state and go, please cancel your registration and get lost. Government is selling surrender registration when the exhibition is over. Are we clear, everyone? The next one over here is amendment. Everyone, amendment of registration. What do you mean by amendment, everyone? Any change, Any change if you want to do in registration, that is known as amendment. Everyone over here. They are telling over here, amendment of registration. Now, amendment can be of three, three types. One is change in constitution resulting in pan, pan change. One is other change which is non-core. And the other one is over here, core field. Everyone remember one thing. Whenever there is a change in the pan number, whenever there is a change in the pan number, then sir, always you have to apply for fresh raise. I transferred my business to you. You are going to apply as a fresh raise. You can't say, sir, Ramesh ka pan, you remove and put my pan. I will, government told, Ramesh has to cancel and you have to take new registration. Next one over here, sir, change in non-core field. What do you mean by non-core field, everyone? Non-core field means which are not very important fields of your business. In that scenario, officer does not have to verify anything. Are we clear? In that scenario, you go online and apply for uh, apply in GSTRG 14 that I want amendment and Baba upon submission of your GSTRG 14 amendment will happen. The last one over here is very very important for exam. You should remember this core field amendment. What are the core fields? Core fields number one. Core field of amendment is number one legal name. Sir, my legal name of business has changed. Number two, address of principal place of business or additional place of business has changed or sir, there is an addition, deletion, retirement of partner, director, karta, managing committee, board of trustee, CEO, basically who are responsible for the day-to-day -day affairs of the business. They have retired, might be there, one has retired, someone else has come. Then, which do not need cancellation, then Baba, just go ahead and amend your registration certificate. Baba, remember one thing, in these three cases, basically verification of the officer is required. So, always remember, whenever there is a change in the registration particulars, you should go ahead and apply within how many days? 15 days. In GSTRG, 14. Plus, you have to give supporting document. Officer will go ahead and do the verification. If proper officer is of the opinion that amendment is warranted, means amendment is correct required documents are complete amendment is required documents are complete and correct then sir he will approve the amendment within 15 working days and he will give you a gstr is a 15 sir if officer is of the view that amendment is not required or documents are incomplete or incorrect then he will give you a gstr is 03 telling sir show cause notice saying sir i want this document i want this clarification then within 15 working days he will give you either he will approve or he will give you show cause notice. You have to go ahead and to show cause within the next seven days why application should not be rejected. You go ahead and reply to him in RG04. If he finds the reply satisfactory, he will approve the amendment within how many days? Seven working days and issue you GSTRG 15. But sir, if your reply is not satisfactory, then what will happen everyone? Then he will go ahead and reject the application and pass an order in GSTRG 05. Remember one thing everyone, whenever, sir, note, Change in mobile number. Supposingly, you want to change your mobile number the, or email address. That will happen only after verification through OTP. Sir, the next one over here is, sir, supposingly, officer does not go ahead and take action within 15 days or once I go ahead and reply within the next seven, seven days, either it, he has to approve or reject. If officer does not go ahead and do his work on time, then what will happen? Registration certificate will be amended and amended registration certificate to be made available to the registered person done sir point is clear everyone please come to the next chart first of all please come to the next chart what did i go ahead and tell you till now i went ahead and taught registration may section number 22 people who are liable how many cases one two three four baba one two three four telling is very easy remember supplier is liable existing registered person transferee and here also transferee in case of amalgamation from the date of Certificate of incorporation. Section number 23, we entered in on people who are not liable. 24, people who are required, compulsory. 25, procedure. 26, deemed registration. 27, everyone? CTP and RTP. 28, we learned amendment. Now we are going to learn about section number 29, which talks about cancellation. 
everyone over here again an important section section number 291 and section number 292 is most important for exam you have to be careful everyone over here section number 291 may it goes ahead and says everyone section number 291 may it goes ahead and says a proper officer wants to cancel your registration on his own proper officer can cancel suo moto or you give an application or supposingly one person is gone then sir legal hire will go ahead and cancel are we clear everyone where sir when can proper officer cancel or when you can give an application or when someone is gone then sir legal hire can give an application when number one business discontinued or you transferred the business might be one person died or it disposed of the business demerger happened amalgamation amalgamation means a and b company a and B became A, B. Now, who will cancel? Old people will cancel their registration. I transfer the business to someone else, then I'll cancel my registration. Are we clear, everyone? Sir, one person died. Why should I die? One person died. Now, if one person died, then legal hire will go ahead and cancel. Are we clear, everyone? So, they are going ahead and telling whenever there is a business discontinued or transferred. Secondly, there is a change in constitution of the business. Proprietorship became partnership. Partnership became LLP. Baba, whenever constitution will change, PAN will change. PAN change means? Old registration cancel, new registration to be taken. Sir, you are no longer liable under 22 or 24. You are telling, sir, 22 or 24 may. I am no more doing interstate supply under section number 24. I was required compulsory. I am not doing interstate supply. Can I cancel my registration? Yes. Sir, 40 lakh is now the limit for supplier of goods. I am doing only 20 lakh. Shall I cancel my registration? Yes, Baba, you can go ahead and do. Are we clear, everyone? Yes. Sir, or you intend to out of the Bakra system. You became voluntary, you took voluntary registration, you are telling sir, I don't want to be registered, then Baba, you can go ahead and apply for cancellation. Are we clear? In this three scenario, always remember, you can apply. Might be, officer came to know that one person has died, then officer can swim to go ahead and cancel also. Can I go ahead everyone? The next one over here is section number 29, 2, which goes ahead and talks about proper officer may cancel the registration. When can proper officer cancel the registration very very important from point of view of the exam everyone listen to me very carefully number one if you have gone ahead and contravened such provision of the act or rules everyone listen to me very carefully if you go ahead and contravene the provision of the act or rules any provision or of the act or rules if you contravene can your registration be cancelled no baba no they have gone ahead and told only such provision and such provision are told in rule number 21 only if these provisions you go ahead and contravene then your registration will be cancelled sir 500 rupees ka invoice I did not give. They will cancel your registration. Are you guys getting my point over here? They are going ahead and telling no business from declared place of business. You are declared, supposing this place as your place of business and you are not doing business from here only, then your registration can be cancelled. You are issuing invoice or bill without supplying in violation of the act or rules. You are going, you are telling, hey, you want ITC, I will give you bogus invoice. Fake invoice I will give. I will not supply. I will give you invoice and you take credit. If you are going ahead and doing all those things, then government is selling, we will go ahead and cancel your registration. Then, sir, you violate the provision of section number 171 of the act or rules made there under. You are doing profit ring. You are doing profit ring. For you, profit ring is not applicable. For you, profit ring is not applicable. So, I am not going ahead and talking about it now. Everyone over here now. Sir, you violated the provision of 10A. What is 10A, everyone? You have to furnish the bank account detail after registration within 45 days or first monthly return. You did not furnish. Or, sir, you availed the ITC in violation of section number 16. Baba, in section number 16, in our ITC chapter, we learned what are the conditions to take the ITC. You violated the condition and you took ITC. Then, or rules made there under, or sir, you are furnishing your details of outward supply. Baba, you know what you are doing. You are going ahead and showing in your GSTR1 that my sale was 10 crore and 1.8 crore ka GST you are passing on. And people are getting their credit in GSTR 2A to B and people are able to take 1.8 crore ka credit. When you have to file your GSTR 3B, you will pay the tax of 1.8 crore. You are saying 1 lakh ka sale, 18,000 ka GST. Government is going ahead and telling, cheating. We will cancel your registration. Are we clear everyone? Can we go ahead? The next one over here is, so sir, furnishing details of outward supply in GSTR1 greater than outward supply declared in a valid return under section number 39. What is a valid return? Where you have paid your taxes and you have filed your return. Are we clear everyone? The next one over here, if you violate the provision of rule number 86B, rule number 86B comes in your payment of taxes chapter, where it is told that you have to pay 1% in cash. You do you remember everyone? Yes, sir. 99% you can use your credit. 1% you have to pay in cash. If you violate the condition of rule number 86B, then your registration can be cancelled. Everyone over here now. Now, they are going ahead and telling, sir, rule number 21 also goes ahead and says, amendment everyone, amendment. See, 
if you are registered person you are required to file re return under section number 391 for each month baba you are not under qrmp scheme you are under monthly return scheme and sir for one month you have for each month or part thereof you have to file a return and you have not filed your gstr 3b for an example for a continuous period of how many months six months registration cancelled are we clear everyone the next one over here is being a registered person required to file return under section number 391 for each quarter you are filing return quarterly can you tell me how many quarters hey six months means how many quarter two quarter can i go ahead everyone? i correct or not six months means how many quarter two quarter who told four quarter Everyone here now, being a registered person required to fund his return under section number 391 for each quarter, then sir or part thereof did not fund his for how many quarter? Two tax period means two. Array six months means for quarterly return people, how many quarter? Two quarter. Can I go ahead everyone? So sir, if I don't go ahead and file my return, which is your monthly return for six months, or if I am a person under quarterly return, that for two quarter, if I don't file my return, then what will happen everyone? Registration will be cancelled. Everyone over here now. Sir, I am a composition dealer. Baba, do you remember composition dealer? What return he goes ahead and files? For the full year, they have to file on 30th April. What return? GSTR 4. Now, sir, if they don't go ahead and file their GSTR 4, for how many? If this is the due date, sir, everyone listen to me very carefully. 30th April is the due date. 1, 2, 3 months already over and composition dealer does not file his return, then sir, after three months, the registration can be cancelled. Composition dealer has not furnished a return for a financial year beyond how many times? Three months from the due date of furnishing the said return. Then sir, due date is what? 30th of April. If three months have already passed by, then in case of comp normal person, everyone? Six months or two quarter. Composition dealer, Baba, they have gone ahead and told, they file year may one return only with his GSTR 4. Sir, the... For full year, they file only one GSTR. Four. Now, this GSTR four, if you don't go ahead and file within three months from the due date, then they are going ahead and telling, we'll cancel your registration. Everyone over here. Registered person other than compo. Can you tell me other than compo means? Normal person. If they don't furnish the return for a continuous period of as may be prescribed. How, huh, sir? Prescribed. Prescribed is where? Here. Six months or two quarter. Everyone over here now, voluntary registered person, you are the Pakra, you told I want registration, I want registration, you took registration, six months you are not doing business only, nil return, every month, government is selling, hey, unnecessarily you are taking our cloud space, correct or not, you are not paying any money also and you are using our cloud space, we will go ahead and cancel your registration, has commenced business, has not commenced business within six months, then his registration can be cancelled. The next one, registration obtained, you gave fake document. Instead of your photo, you have put doc's photo. They are going ahead and telling everyone over here. No, I have taken my friend's bank account, edited, put all these things. If you go, no, okay. Registration can I any document to be given. Now, bank account is not required only. Any other document to be given, you have given fake document. Then they are going ahead and telling if registration was obtained by fraud, willful misstatement or suppression of fact, then your registration can be cancelled. Sir, my registration is cancelled. Ah, 5 crore rupees I have collected. I will run away. Government is selling. Hey, cancellation will not affect the liability to pay tax and dues. Remember, whether determined before or after means whether officer has gone ahead and caught you before cancellation or after cancellation also, you have to go ahead and pay your dues which you have gone ahead and collected. Everyone over here now. The next one, sir, sir, marriage cancelled with daughter, marriage cancelled with father. Yes, everyone. Sir, cancellation under AGST Act, deem cancellation under CAGST Act. Are we all clear till here, everyone? The next one is section number 29.5, which goes ahead and reads with rule number, which you should read with rule number 44. Everyone listen to me very carefully. You are a person, you are registered. Now, you are cancelling your registration and taking all the goods home. Government is going ahead and telling, beta, if you would have gone ahead and sold it, I would have earned money out of it. But you are going to take it home. So, sir, do one thing. When you go ahead and close your business, please pay me whatever ITC you had taken on those goods. Or if you would have sold it, how much GST you would have paid? That much you have to go ahead and pay me. But was section number 29.5, for your exam purpose, don't worry about it. They are going to ask a theoretical question if they want to. Otherwise, practical question they will not go ahead and ask on this. Are we clear, everyone? What are they telling over here? Section number 25.5, read with rule number 44, tax payable on cancellation. Once the registration is cancelled, whatever is inputs are lying in your stock, 
might be something is lying in your semi finished goods or finished goods on that whatever itc you are taken or if you sell them how much gst you will pay whichever is higher you have to pay if you cancel your sir i will take capital goods also whatever itc you are taken or whatever if you sell them whatever gst is payable whichever is reduced amount taking life of 60 months sir for an example i had paid 60000 rupees gst on an asset now i am closing down my business after 30 months how many months of life of asset of is remaining 30 months 30 months ke liye how much credit 30000 or if i sell the asset how much gst will come whichever is higher are we clear everyone not very important from exam point of view but i have told you quickly from exam point of view section number 291 and section number 292 everyone over here now this is the procedure which is written over here. I'll tell you quickly. Everyone over here, listen. Sir, one person died. Then always remember within 30 days, you have to go ahead and apply for registration in GSTRG 16. When you are going ahead and applying for registration, please tell all the details of your stock, semi-finished goods and finished goods on the date when cancellation is sought. Sir, then what will happen? Whatever is your liability, sir, inputs per liability, capital goods per liability, then plus you have to pay that amount. And supporting document has to be given. Now what will happen? Cancellation proceedings will go on. And your registration cancellation order will come. Once the cancellation order comes, officer will tell, hey, this much amount also you have to pay. Then do one thing. Whatever is your final amount payable, within the next three months you pay and file your bye-bye return, which is your final return after payment of all your taxes. Can I go ahead, everyone? Everyone over here now. Sir, supposingly, if cancellation is done by proper officer, then, then Baba, always remember one thing. Proper officer will first issue a show cause notice show me the cause why i should not go ahead and cancel your registration you have to go ahead and reply him within seven working days you supposedly replied to him over here if he likes your reply he will drop the proceeding he does not like your reply he will go ahead and tell you one date when he will start his cancellation ka proceeding once the cancellation proceedings are over cancellation order will be given and he will tell you hey pay all the tax, interest, penalty, and any other amount which is payable under section number 29.5. Are we clear, everyone? And then, once you go ahead and make the payment, you file your GSTR 10, which is your bye-bye return to GST. Are we clear, everyone? This procedure which is there, I've gone ahead and told you quickly over here. And always remember 29.1 and 29.2 being the most important part over here. Can we go ahead, everyone? Now, listen to me very carefully. When cancellation proceedings are going on, people went ahead and told, sir, can you please go ahead and suspend my registration? Are we clear, everyone? And hence, we have a provision of section number, rule number 21A, which goes ahead and talks about suspension. Everyone, please come to rule number 21A. Everyone over here, suspension of registration. Listen to me very carefully. What do you mean by suspension, everyone? Suspension means what? Sir, when the cancellation proceedings are going on, you can go ahead and tell the officer that, sir, when the cancellation proceedings are going on, why should I go ahead and file my return? And hence, there was a provision of what? Suspension which was introduced, wherein they told, registered person has applied for cancellation. You have applied for cancellation. And when the cancellation proceedings are going on, your registration will be suspended from the date of submission of application or from the date when cancellation is sought. You submitted the application on 15th of March and you are telling my registration should be cancelled from 1st of April. Then from the 1st of April, your registration will be suspended because from 1st of April, your cancellation proceedings will start. Whichever is later. Sir, supposingly, if proper officer has reason to believe that registration is liable to be cancelled, then he may suspend. Who will suspend everyone? Proper officer may suspend with effect from a date to be determined by him pending completion of cancellation proceeding. Everyone over here, officer gave you a show cause notice. You replied to him. He did not like your reply. What will he do? He will tell from this day I am starting the cancellation proceeding. The day he starts the cancellation proceeding, your registration will be suspended. Everyone over here now. The next one over here is where, you know what happened? Your GSTR 1, GSTR 3B, they compared. Your GSTR 1, GSTR 3B or some other comparison was done and it was found that you are going ahead and showing in your GSTR 3B 10 crore ka sale, passing on the credit, but GSTR 3B, GSTR 1 may, you are showing sale, you are showing GST, passing on the credit, but GSTR 3B when you are filing, you are not paying your taxes correctly. If you have gone ahead and done something like this, then automatically your registration gets suspended. Everyone over here, where a comparison of the return furnished by the person under section number 39 means your GSTR. 3B, with the details of outward supply furnished in GSTR 1, your GSTR 3B and GSTR 1 may, sales are not matching. 
Are we clear, everyone? Or details of inward supply derived on the base of supplier GSTR1. Everyone, my GSTR 2A, 2B may. Supplier will show GSTR1 may details. It will come in my 2A, 2B. My 2A, 2B ka detail. Whatever credit is appearing and GSTR 3B may what credit I am showing are not matching. Are you guys able to understand? Then they are going ahead and telling. Or any other analysis carried on by the on the recommendation of council shows that there are significant differences or any anomalies means wrongdoings are there. Then they will go ahead and suspend your registration. Basically, proper officer does not suspend over here. Automatically, suspension happens. Are we clear, everyone? Automatically, your registration is suspended and you are issued what, everyone? GSTR is the 31 highlighting the differences and always remember you have to go ahead and reply within 30 days as to why your registration should not be cancelled. Everyone over here listen to me very carefully. Sir if you are a registered person and registration has been suspended under 1, 2 or 2A remember one thing you should not go ahead and file your return. Baba Aram say cancellation proceedings are going on. Don't go ahead and file your return. Sir you shall not go ahead and file your return and don't make any taxable supplies only. For an example if during this period if during this period my registration is suspended, Baba, remember one thing, then in this period I can make supply, but I should not go ahead and issue tax invoice. It means what will I do? I will just issue invoice. I am telling, sir, I am not required registration. I am not required to charge GST. I have already applied for cancellation. When the cancellation proceedings are going on, my registration will be suspended and I am not required registration. I know I am not required registration. That is why I applied for cancellation. So government is going ahead and telling during this period you can make supply. You can go ahead and issue what? Invoice. But you can't go ahead and charge tax to your customer by issuing tax invoice. Are we all clear till here? Sir, so supposingly here officer told, hey, your registration will not be cancelled. You are required registration. You are doing interstate supply. Now registration revived. Sir, registration revived. Then all these supplies pay whatever invoices you had issued. You have to pay tax. So you can go ahead and issue what? Revised tax invoice. Are we clear everyone? And revised tax invoice you can show it in your first first return which you are going ahead and filing after your registration is revived. Are we all clear till here everyone? Everyone over here now listen to me very carefully. You shall not make taxable supply means you shall not issue tax invoice and you should not charge tax to your customer during suspension. But sir tell me one thing if later suspension is revoked and the registration is revived then then Baba you have to issue revised tax invoice and all these revised tax invoice you should show in your first first return. Are we clear everyone? Now listen. Sir my registration is cancelled. I will do one thing whatever taxes I have to take refund I will take refund and run. Government is telling hey when registration is cancelled refund also will not be given. A registered person whose Registration has been suspended under 2 or 2A means when the officer has gone ahead and suspended your registration then sir you shall not be granted a refund under section number registration has been suspended you will not be given any refund everyone over here now now sir supposingly later everyone tell me one thing suspension was going on suspension was going on later cancellation happened then <coughs> officer gave you cancellation from here. Then Baba, what will they t tell over here? Its suspension will be revoked. From here only, it will be like suspension was never there and your registration will be cancelled from here. Are we clear everyone? That is what is the next point telling over here. Sir, what is the proviso? See, the suspension under 1, 2 or 2A shall be deemed to be revoked upon completion of cancellation proceedings. Revocation will be effective from the date when suspension has come into effect. Means sir, supposingly, my registration was suspended from here. Suspension was going on. Here, cancellation proceedings got over and they are telling we will cancel your registration from here. Are Baba. So, during this period I was suspended or I was thrown out only. Thrown out only and hence suspension will be revoked and suspension will be revoked from the day suspension had come into effect. Are we all clear till here? Everyone over here now. PO may revoke suspension anytime during the pen pendency of cancellation proceeding. Okay. Then, sir, one proviso has been inserted over here. Now listen, where registration has been suspended under 2A. Baba, 2A may I went ahead and told you, you know your GSTR1, GSTR3B will be compared. Now when your GSTR1, GSTR3B was compared, they went ahead and saw that there are a lot of differences. GSTR1 may are showing 10 crore ka sale. GSTR3B may are showing 1 lakh rupees ka sale. You are going ahead and doing something wrong. And I told you that sir, your registration, you can say registration will be suspended, not by PO, automatically suspension happens actually. Are we clear everyone? Now in this scenario, if you go online, 
and they are going ahead and telling, sir, if registration was suspended under 2A for contravention of section number 29 2B or C, means you are not going ahead and filing your returns. 29 2B and C was what? Baba, section number 29B, 2B and C was, sir, if you are not filing your return, means supposingly I am filing my GSTR 1, passing on the credit, but GSTR 3B I am not filing, then, so they are going ahead and telling your registration will be suspended. Now do one thing, go online and file your return, your suspension will be revoked. That is what they are telling over here, see, and registration is yet to be cancelled. People, I told you now over here that sir, automatically if registration is suspended, then they will issue you a GSTR is 31 and they will tell you, you have to reply within 30 days as to why your registration should not be cancelled. Now what happened, your online may automatically what happened, because you are not filing your GSTR 3B, they went ahead and suspended. They went ahead and suspended your registration. Do, on, do one thing, go online, file all your returns. File all your returns and registration is yet to be cancelled. Then the suspension shall be deemed to be revoked upon furnishing of all the pending returns. Are we all clear? Did you guys understand this thing? Everyone, I was not filing my return. I showed my GSTR 1 May sale and it went to the front person ka credit. He went ahead and took the credit. I am not filing my GSTR 3B. They are going ahead and telling beta, we will automatically suspend your registration. Now, if you want your suspension to be revoked, file all your returns, but your registration should not have been cancelled by now. If your registration is yet to be cancelled, then just go online, file your returns and registration suspension will be revoked. Are we all clear till here, everyone? Everyone over here. Now, uh, sir, my registration is cancelled. Can I go ahead, everyone? Everyone over here now. Sir, your name? Yuraj, this is Yuraj everyone. Now, Yuraj, what happened? Yuraj's registration is cancelled by the proper officer. Okay? Now, sir, within 30 days or extended time limit, he has to go online and apply for reverse, sir. Please don't cancel my registration. If proper officer is satisfied, then they will revoke the cancellation and issue a GSTRZ 22. But, sir, officer is not satisfied. They are telling, hey, Yuraj is a bad boy. His registration will not. His registration certificate, which was cancelled, it will stand cancelled only. They are not revoking. Then, sir, first they will issue you a GSTRG 23. Sir, in that they will give you a show cause notice. Why we should not, we, why we should not reject your revocation application. You go ahead and reply to the officer with all the clarification, information and document. He, within 30 days, if officer is satisfied, he'll revoke the cancellation and issue an order. If officer is not satisfied, he'll reject the application and pass an order. Are we all clear? Remember one thing. Sir, before you are applying the vocation application, what is the time that can be extended? You should always apply within 30 days. But sir, additional or joint commissioner can extend by further 30 days and commissioner can extend by further 30 days. And always remember, if your registration was cancelled because you did not file your all your return, then first file your return and then apply for revocation. Proviso, if registration was cancelled due to non-filing of return, before applying, file all your return, pay all the tax, interest, penalty and late fee and then only apply for revocation. Are we all clear till here everyone? This chapter from exam point of view is an A graded chapter. I will go ahead and tell you that section number 29 May, 29.1 and 29.2 being the most important. In this chart, core field amendment being the most important. Baba, I am telling you most important. My feelings and examiner ka feeling might not be same. Okay, he can ask you something else also. I am telling you what I think. Okay, here everyone, other authentication wala point you remember? This one, you can remember 10B. You can remember this one, this point. Okay, everyone? You can remember this corner wala point also. That sir, you should apply for registration within 30 days, CTB and RTB, 5 days prior, SEZ, separate, TWI, nearest, coastal state. Are we all clear everyone? The next one over here is this one, this one, the full chart is A graded. Baba, this chapter is A graded and this chart is also A graded. 22, 23 and 24, 100% 4 marks they will go ahead and ask. Are we clear everyone? I will go ahead and stop my discussion on the chapter of registration section number 22 people who are liable 23 people who are not liable 24 compulsory registration 25 procedure 26 team registration 27 ctb and rtb 28 amendment 29 cancellation 30 revocation of cancellation are we clear everyone listen one thing
in your exam if you don't remember the section number right as per the cgst act if you don't remember form number it's okay but don't write wrong and come are we clear everyone i'll go ahead and stop all my discussion on chapter number whatever chapter registration ka chapter congratulations people done